Greetings and welcome to a new video about whole phase rectifiers. In this example, we will discuss the whole phase rectifier having an RL load in series combination. In the previous example, we have seen a whole phase rectifier with a pure resistive load. And now we will see what the effect is of this inductor for our load current and load voltage and also the other parameters in our circuit. We will see that step by step shortly in our calculation and also verify this in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Okay, this is our circuit. We have again our AC volt source here, ES, given by this expression. We have a resistor 50 ohms again, and the inductor now in series of 100 mini henrys. Again, we like to calculate these values, the average load current, average load voltage, and RMS load current and RMS load voltage, etc. So we would like to see that step by step for this circuit also. And let's first focus on the graphs from this circuit. We have this VS here, which is our source voltage, pure sine wave, and this load current IO has a different shape than we have encountered in our, our load. And we will see that shortly what this beta means. There's also this output voltage. Again, uh, because of this consequence, we see also an interesting thing happening here, which is our negative voltage. Also the resistor uh, voltage here and also the inductor voltage itself and also the diode voltage are shown all here. So let's start with the calculations. First we designate our Vs given in time domain changing that to the omega t. So this is actually now uh, preferred in our power calculations. Now for forward biased ideal diode the differential equation can be written for this circuit like so. So we have an input which is then since the diode is forward biased so it is perfectly short no volts drop across the diode is then the resistor times the current flowing through this resistor which is then just ohm's law plus the inductor voltage given by l times the derivative of this current now this is a differential equation you can solve and then you get a solution for the load current which is a summation of the force response given here by the subscript f and also the natural response this is also called the particular solution also the homogeneous solution in calculus now together we need to add them up so for let's first focus on specifically what the solution is for each of it so the force response is given by this expression you see actually a sine expression again and the natural response is given by this expression where you see the exponential part which is a decaying part of this expression now all together we need to add them up that is just a summation so it's a superposition we get now the total load current is the summation of the force response plus the a natural response now taking this together as we have this expressions here in general form we will shortly see what the z and the theta and the uh, tau means here we have this expression we can simplify this also because every, every both terms have um, uh, vm over z so we can take it out we have this expression now in this case the z is the impedance the series impedance here which is then the calculation of the resistor and the reactance of this inductor the theta is the angle by this uh, impedance here which is then imaginary divided by the real part which is actually shown here and we have also the tau which is our time constant given by the inductor value divided by the resistor value so we need to also calculate those three what we also can do as said before we can express this expression which is given in time domain omega t domain and we have this expression moving on and then also designating that there are two conditions or two regions for our load current one of them is what we just calculated and the other one is zero you can also see that in the plot here because this is valid in this part which is from zero to beta and then from beta to two pi it is actually not present anymore and then it repeats again but what is this uh, condition so it means actually from omega t between zero and beta and for between omega t between beta and 2 pi it is zero but we need to dis discuss this beta in uh, more detail and also calculate this later for future calculations the load current reaches zero when the diode turns off so if the diode turns off meaning reverse bias that means this will in an open circuit the load current will be zero that's actually shown here it's also starting here but the next time it will be zero it's actually shown here which is given by beta now that is gi uh, given or called the extinction angle beta. So it will be then stay alive, let's say, between zero and beta. 
the load current starts or become positive when the AC voltage goes up. So it goes positive, that is actually starting from the origin. But the load current flows not only during the positive cycle, which we had in the resistive load, but also during a portion of the negative cycle. Because this, you see here, if you look for, uh, at the Vs, which is this, now it, it goes down, it will be negative, but still the, uh, the load current is positive. So it is still conducting so from top to bottom. Now that is an interesting thing and that is happening between the pi and beta. Again, beta needs to be calculated. That is because of this stored energy in the inductor. Because of the stored energy in the inductor, inductor maintains the load current and the inductor's terminal voltages reverses such that this current is still flowing in the same direction as initially. And it's able to overcome this negative supply voltage here and then keep that conducting of this complete circle or the circuit so the diode is still forward biased. This will only last uh, until the, all the inductor energy is released or dissipated. So we need to have a specific time for that or a specific uh, phase. And that is actually given by this beta or distance between the pi and the beta. And that's the reason for having this small extension here after this beta. Okay, now after this very brief discussion about why this beta here, we can determine now this extension angle beta by looking at our expression for our load current because this load current is given here. And if we now set this zero, that is just solving the problem, we can find what this expression should be or what the value of this will be for beta. Now we take this formula, substitute where we see an omega t with beta here, we make a beta there, and then uh, equal to equate at zero. This will be cancelled, so we get actually effectively this. And that means we need to solve this. So for solutions are given by the solving of this equation. That can be done numerically, so or using a, a solver with your calculator or any other program. And the unit for beta in this case is radians, if you look at this, or you can also use degrees if you prefer that. But for solving this problem, for this equation, you need to use radians in our calculator. Now, again, we take everything together here. Now, from the given information, we can calculate now the parameters we just uh, have here. So the Z will be then square root of 50 squared plus 100 pi times 0.1 quantity squared. Everything from this uh, information here that will give us 59.05 ohm. And we have also this theta, which is arctangent of this omega over r, given here, which will be then 0.561 radians or 32.1 degrees, if you want to convert that. And the time constant will be then 2 milliseconds, so 0.1 over 50. Then we have the following, that our load current for this part only is given by this. So just substitute here 20, your z, the theta, and also the the time constant in the omega, which is 100 pi, everything is here. Now, when you s simplify this further, because this 20 over 59.05 is just this, 0 0.3386 approximately. You can also calculate this sine of 0 0.561, that is this one. And you have also here minus one over this 100 pi times 0 0.002, that will be effectively minus 1.592 times, and then everything here with this omega t. And this is a simple expression compared to that one. And that is only valid again for zero to beta for omega t. Okay, now we have necessary information. Only left uh, info here is our beta. Now let's first start with the first uh, calculation, which is our average load current. That is given in the general form again, this one. And we know that we start at zero and then actually reach our final point at beta. So we can integrate from zero to beta. The period is still 2 pi, so we need to again divide by 2 pi this integral. We know the expression for our load curve, but we need to first also calculate the beta, and that is already given how do we need to do that. So we substitute the values. How do we solve this? Using a solver, so you can just solve this, and then you get a solution for that, and that is here 3.704 radians. Okay, now when you now substitute that in this formula, and then again, using a solver or any calculator that can do this integration, because this integration is quite tedious by hand, you can do it, but it is not really uh, handy to do this by hand if you really need to save time. Now you just substitute the value here. 
or the expression for our load current I must say and that will give you 117.5 milliamps okay now the next one is the average load voltage that is easy because that can be done using ohm's law which is then vo is equal to r times the io so the average load voltage is resistor times average load current that is then 5.875 volts now taking these all together and then also the necessary information for later calculation for c rms load current in a similar way we have done in the previous example we need to use a definition for rms again from zero to beta but then now the squared quantity of our load current again the beta here is 3.704 so that we also need to be added but we need to square this complete quantity here and now the integration is even more complex so definitely better to do this using a calculator so if you do this with the calculator you get now here 1.177 milliamps okay the RMS load voltage now need to be very careful because that is not really using Ohm's law because this voltage here will be across this uh, output voltage for the time that this is valid so that means from zero to beta so we can say just integrate from zero to beta this VO squared but it is also VS squared that's the same thing and when you now substitute this 20 sine 100 pi t here and then do the integration again using the beta of 3.704 then you get here 10.18 volts now we have the observed power that is calculated using this for a formula because you need to look at the resistor so it is that you need to use the uh, rms load current not the rms load voltage because that is over the complete series combination and if you use the rms load current you can specify which element you want that is actually the resistor they get now 1.57 watts power factor is again defined as the true power or the observed power divided by the apparent power s is the rms value of the source voltage times the rms value of the source current source current rms value is equal to the source the load current rms value because they are in series so and we know what that is what that is 177 milliamps the source voltage rms is the amplitude of this pure sine wave divided by the square root of two that is actually a straightforward calculation again using this definition for the rms that will give us one uh, give us 14.14 volts then we have for the apparent power 2.503 volt amperes now substitute that in this formula you get here now 0 0.627 for our power factor okay now we have all the necessary values from for this calculation so we have these six uh, solutions here now let's look at the uh, simulation results this is now the circuit in the simulink you can see the ac source which is our 20 sine 100 pi t the ideal diode we have here 50 ohm and 100 milli uh, henrys for our components you see that we here measure the current that goes here which is our load current we also measure here the load current mean which is our average and then also the rms value and from the same uh, in a similar um, way we measure the load voltage mean and the load voltage rms what do we see let's go one by one we have an average load current of 0.1175 amps which is this so that is checked the average load voltage is 5.876 volts which is very close to what we have here so that's also checked and we have also the rms load current which is 0.177 amps which is what we also had 177 milliamps and we also we also have this rms load voltage which is 10.18 which is also close to what we have calculated okay so we can say in all total this is good look now at the uh, plots we have here the red one which is our vs source the green one is our output voltage and the yellow one is our output current or that is a load voltage or load current the point where actually the load current reaches now zero almost zero it is 1.4 milliamps still but it's almost uh, very difficult in the simulink to get this exactly at zero so and that happens at 0 0.012 seconds maybe this is smaller or larger depending on the accuracy so this note here or this point is the in this case the 
uh, phase. So that is actually beta. So beta is here given by omega t. What is omega? In our, in our circuit it is 100 pi. So 100 pi times this time, which is then 0 0.012, will be, if you calculate that, will be 3.77 radians. Now we had, if you remember, beta was 3.704. So this is a small uh, difference, but it is uh, good enough. And also we have also checked that this is indeed extending because the red curve, which is our input voltage, is actually zero here and then gets down. So it's actually getting negative, but still our current is positive. So that's actually, again, that proof that this is indeed the case. And then the beta is here from this part, which is zero up to the point where we have uh, no current anymore. All right, this was our whole wave rectifier having a series RL load. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video.